friends. Hello. Welcome back to Amethyst Craftworks. I'm Samantha. This is my tabletop. Hello and welcome. <laughs> Today, I have got a crochet vlog for you. I'm going to be using some of the Hirschner's Worsted 8 Halloween Sparkle Yarn that I hauled I guess now it's a couple of weeks ago. I will link you up here to it in case you missed that haul. And you guys gave me some really excellent suggestions for using the colors of this yarn that I didn't have plans for. Specifically this one, which is Halloween Party. Hopefully you can see that. It is orange, green, purple, and white with a silver, silver strand of sparkle through it. <clears throat> I bought four of these and four of the candy corn colorway because they came in a pack of four and I had plans for two of the other colors, but not for these. And so I thought I would probably do one or more of the projects that you guys suggested for me. There were so many good suggestions. A chair cover for my recording chair, pillows and throws, and in this case, a wall hanging. I thought that was such an excellent idea, and I've got some supplies to do that project with. And so I'm gonna attempt here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I can do. I've never done a wall hanging, and in my head, it's pretty straightforward. I don't have a specific pattern in mind because I want the colors of the yarn to shine. I want kind of a simple stitch. I don't want a design in the stitch. I just want the colors of the yarn to be the star in this particular project. So of course, I have got the Worsted 8 Halloween Sparkle. I've also got some half inch dowel rods. These are half inch in diameter, I think. And then they are 12 inches, so one foot long. They're from Pinehurst Crafts, as you can see there. But I grabbed these off of Amazon, I am almost positive. I've had these for quite a while. I had another project in mind for them, and then I never got around to it, so I'm glad that I've got these. And, you know, I've also got a crochet hook. This one happens to be a 5.5, or excuse me, just a 5 millimeter crochet hook. This is an Omi hook. A pretty, a pretty lady, isn't she? Um, that's the hook that I think I'm going to use, because I'm almost positive the... Yeah, the hook recommended on the yarn label is an, an eye, which is a 5.5. I want these stitches to be kind of tight, so I went down half a hook size. I think it'll be okay. I don't think it's going to give me any troubles. But yeah, I've never made one of these before, so I don't 100% know what I'm doing. But I have an idea in mind with these things, so... That's what we're going to do. This is like, you know, a follow along with me while I make a thing. Whether or not that thing works out, we will find out. But I'm going to try because I thought that was such an excellent idea. And so I'm going to get myself situated here and then we are going to get started. All right, friends. In between <laughs> the last clip and the one that you were seeing now, I realized I had a pretty gnarly cardboard cut, like a paper cut on my finger because I was breaking down boxes today, just cleaning up and stuff, breaking them down in my basement, you know, and gave myself a pretty, pretty good paper cut on my middle finger here. So you'll have to forgive the, uh, <laughs> the band-aid, but we are ready to get started here. I've pulled out some yarn. I had a little bit of a uh, tangle yarn barf, so that's all right. But we are starting here. 
I pulled one of the dowel rods out and these dowel rods, they're unfinished. So it's just going to have to be this like wood color for now. I think in general, this is sort of a prototype kind of project. I'm only going to make this one here on camera just as like an experiment, but this is for sure if if things go well. <laughs> this is for sure not going to be the only one that I make. So in the future, I could stain this, paint this. I could even cover it with maybe like contact paper. I could also get like finials, I think that's what they're called, to go on the end here so it looks a bit more finished. But for this project, for this version, this is how it's going to look for, for current times, right? Because the star is going to be <laughs> the yarn, right? So I'm just going to just going to get started here. I'm going to make a slip knot. And I think I have decided that the stitch pattern that I'm going to do is the moss stitch. I'll link you down here to the tutorial that I am following. It's from Hooked by Robin. It's a lovely stitch. I have done this stitch quite a few times in recent months. I like it. It is dense. The stitches are close together. There's not a lot of gaps without being too heavy. And I think that'll work out good since we are hanging this on the wall, of course. And, you know, it looks nice. I think it'll look good in this yarn with the stripey, <laughs> the stripiness, right? At least in theory. And so let's just... Let's start things off. One, two, three, four. I'm pretty sure I need an even number. I'm not doing a specific number, but I am going to do one that sort of maybe goes from here to here, leaves a little bit of a gap on the ends for hanging purposes. I don't need it to be the full 12 inches, but maybe like that. So let's just chain and see where we get. Got four, five, six, seven, eight. You also, I mean, of course, I have mentioned here before, <laughs> crocheting on camera, not only do you have a little bit of like the crochet on camera jitters, but this is also kind of at an awkward angle for me, so you may have to forgive any flubs here that I do. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Let's try 20 and see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 20. I can maybe pull this down a little bit. Mm, not quite. Let's try maybe 26. So one, two, four, five, six. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of stretch once it's all crocheted up. So maybe 26 is good. That looks all right to me. I guess that's where we're going to start. And I also, I also picked this stitch because I thought maybe fringe might work good along the bottom, might look cool along the bottom, and the moss stitch has gaps in it, so I figured that might lend itself, <laughs> right, to having fringe on the bottom. We'll see, we'll see how froggy I'm feeling. So I think now we work in the fourth chain, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to work in the back bumps here, just like I did in my wreath, which I'll link to uh, link to up here if you missed that, um, just to give myself a cleaner, no, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> there we go, okay. So we've got a single crochet and a chain one, and then we skip a stitch and we put 
There we go. Sometimes it takes you a minute, right, to uh, get into the groove of the stitch that you were doing. <laughs> it is also quite early in the morning here. I am usually a morning person for the most part. It depends on how much sleep I've gotten the night before, right? But I work kind of like a midday shift for work. And so I try to sort of cram things in the mornings before work, which is what is happening <laughs> today. But anyway, while I work on this, I'm going to talk to you about kind of what I'm thinking this is going to be. So... The inspiration absolutely came from one of you lovelies. Um, I appreciate all the comments and, like, the suggestions and everything. You guys are so creative and smart, and I love the idea of making a wall hanging. And I have seen a few projects here and there across, like, Facebook and Pinterest and stuff where you make a crochet piece and then you hang earrings off of it. And I was like, ooh, that's a fun idea. And I thought of maybe combining that idea with what I'm doing here. Except, <laughs> if you've been following my channel for a while, then you will remember that around my birthday, I got my ears re-pierced. And not only did I get them re-pierced because the earring, like the holes in my ears closed up, but I also got them gauged. I essentially got them like from zero to five millimeters right in one go. And so I don't currently wear regular earrings anymore, at least not currently. You can wear regular earrings sort of in, tucked into the, the hole. <laughs> it sounds so weird. Like inside the, the earring hole along with the plug. And there are, of course, like hangers as well that exist that have like hooks to put regular earrings on. But I'm not at that point yet. I still am sort of deciding what size gauge I want to be before I even, like, begin buying other earrings and things, right? So I'm currently at five millimeters. I think I'd like to go up at least a couple millimeters more, but I don't currently really own many regular earrings, but then, as I was sort of brainstorming the idea for this project in this video, I realized, and I can even show you because I, I brought him in here, this is Chucky. He is the keeper of my loose stitch markers. I have another container from Tina that has stitch markers sort of beautifully arranged and kept. But the ones that I sort of grab for while I'm currently working end up in here. This was a little candy tin from Sandy from Crochet A Canada. Hey, Sandy. Um, I love this tin. <laughs> and inside, there is a very big button, which I <laughs> forgot was in here. I was working on something with buttons and had this pink one. Anyway, that's not, <laughs> that's not the point. The point is, in here, I've got my fancy schmancy stitch markers as well. And I'll lay them out here. Hopefully you can see them. These first two, the skull and the little pumpkin witch, these two are from Rose, from Rose Likes Crochet. Hi, Rose. Um, these are from her, her store. I bought these last year for the 12 Days of Christmas gift exchange with Heather, the crochet witch. 
hey girl, like <laughs> shouting out and calling out and saying hello to all my friends. But I gave her a skull and kept a uh, pumpkin witch. We like traded, you know, like best friends charms. So I have these two. And then one of you lovely people, her name was Sarah, I believe. Hello, Sarah. Sent me for Valentine's Day another little heart stitch marker. So I have three. I have a small <laughs> collection, but I have three of them. And they have lever back, earring, attachment things, uh, findings on them. And so I thought instead of having earrings on here, I would hook my fancy schmancy stitch markers to the stitches and then have a cool place to like dangle my stitch markers on my wall, right? This also may or may not give me an excuse to buy more fancy stitch markers, right? And then I can just walk up, pull it off, use it, take it, use it, put it back, you know, when I'm done. Like, I love it. And they're on display. They're out and about. You can see them. And as much as I love this tin with my other plastic stitch markers, which all just so happen to be pink, as well as this button is pink. They, like, match in here. Um, but instead of, like, keeping them hidden away in a tin like that, closed up, as much as I love this tin, I can then see them, right? So that's kind of the idea that I had. It's the sort of inspiration here for this project. I thought it was a good one. <laughs> I kind of uh, got there eventually explaining it. But I really want this yarn to be prominent. So I thought this stitch was a good one to sort of showcase the yarn while also giving me sort of a dense fabric to then hook all my stitch markers to. And you can see down here on the, the foundation chain, there are little gaps here, of course, because it's a single, chain one, single, and so on. And so I thought maybe some fringe or some beads? I don't know. I've got a collection of beads as well that would look cool. But I'm also not 100% sure on how I would attach them along with fringe. So that's what this... <laughs> crochet vlog is for, right? We're figuring things out as we go. But yeah, that was my, that was my whole idea here. Hopefully you think it's cool. And like I said, this is sort of the prototype. It is the experiment version. Once I sort of get this process down, then I could totally make more. I've got plenty of dowel rods. I've got plenty of yarn. I don't think this is gonna take a ton of yarn either. And yeah, I think it'll look awesome and I can make so many others. The other thing is that I'm gonna go until I have one full repeat of the four colors that are in this yarn. So we're currently on orange, and there is still a bit of orange left here. But then it goes to the green, and then we also have purple and white. I don't know how long the stripes are going to be versus, you know, the moss stitch here. How much distance we're going to get, that's not really the word I'm looking for. Like how how thick of a stripe it's going to work up here. So I'm going to at least do one full color repeat, you know, have all four colors in the wall hanging, and then maybe go from there, maybe do two color repeats. Dunno, we haven't got that far, but that's sort of where I'm at in my brains 
figuring this out. And so, yeah, we've got a couple of rows here. It looks very nice. I think the moss stitch, it just is one of my favorite stitches. I love the way it looks. And I think once we hit the green here, which is coming up pretty soon, it's going to look awesome, right? So I'm going to work on this here for a little bit. I'll get maybe some of the green in, and then I'll meet back up with you, and we will touch base and keep going. color change. I've almost completed the green. I only have a little bit left of the green here. And then we, we transition to the white. And I would say maybe one full color change. So do a block kind of this size of the white and then this size of the purple. I think will look pretty cool. I think it'll be a length, a good length that will look nice with the dowel rod it does it did stretch in a little bit it is a little more narrow but that's fine like this doesn't have to be perfect essentially i'm kind of working my way through making this so that i can then do it again right <laughs> i think that's sort of my thinking here but it'll also give me options for hanging. I can do something with this in the future as well. Like, we'll figure it out. It'll be great. But I'm just going to work on this for a while. I'm going to crochet some more rows here, get through the white, and then up into the purple. And then we'll kind of figure out if that's the length that I want. Or if I want it to be maybe a little longer or maybe go back to the orange so that it's kind of sandwiched, right? So the orange starts at the bottom and then it's orange at the top too. That might look cool. I also still haven't quite figured out if I want to do fringe, if I want to do beads. I do have some skull beads, some pony beads that could look cool, but I don't. 100% know how I would attach them on here. I suppose I could. We'll see. We'll see if it even needs it. It might not need it because with some fringe and also with all my stitch markers attached on here, it may not it may not even need the addition <laughs> of some beads. I just kind of want to like work beads into <laughs> into it because I love those beads. But anyway, I'm just going to sit here and crochet for a while. And then I will come back and touch base with you. Kind of figure out where we're going from there once I have this sort of the length that I want. And so, yeah, I will meet you back when I am at least to the purple. All right, friends, we are back. I have got what I think is a decently sized piece. 
I did a full color change. So from orange, green, white, purple, and then back up to the orange. It's a decent size. It's about the size of my hand, give or take. And so for a first try, a first experiment here, I think this is a pretty good size. So we're going to go with this. And I did want to show you kind of how I'm going to try <laughs> to attach this to the dowel rod. So first of all, going to chain one, turn everything around here. And I'm going to do a single crochet in every space as well as the single crochets themselves. So I'm just, I'm essentially going to single crochet across the entire last row here. Now, I have never done something like this before. So <laughs> we... We're gonna find out if it works it should because I'm gonna kind of do it if you've ever made a scrunchie where you crochet around a hair elastic is kind of the same sort of idea that I'm going to be doing with the dowel rod. It might be a little bit funky, but you know, <laughs> that's what these videos are for. This really honestly probably could have been a crafty experiment <laughs> instead of a crochet vlog because I am pretty much experimenting here with what I'm doing. But you know, it's fine. It can be a crochet vlog too. And so I'm just working my way over to the edge just to give myself equal stitches to work into up here at the top. I only got a couple more. There's the last one, I think. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So, here's where the experiment comes in. So, I'm going to chain, I'm going to chain one, but I'm going to do it kind of big like that and then turn. And then I'm going to pull the dowel rod up here. And essentially, I'm going to hold it along the top of these stitches. And single crochet around it. So I'm going under the stitch, around the dowel, hooking the yarn through kind of pulling it loose, and then single crochet. It, in theory, it's a little bit gangly here to hold and show you. And it's also a little awkward to do. But hopefully you can see, I think I'm in frame. It also might help if the dowel rod isn't in the way. <laughs> but I'm just going across here with very loose single crochets. I'm like pulling it up quite a bit and then single crocheting and it is attaching like this is attached here right so <laughs> let's keep going we'll see how it ends up 
me scoot things down and hopefully you can see what I'm doing here because I'm also at a real weird angle so you know please please forgive but I like as I've been working on this not only do I love this yarn like all of the colors that I have worked with so far have been awesome beautiful and witch's brew I have been working on or working with and perhaps I will show you guys soon what I've been doing I did do a couple of rounds on the hexagon cardigan in a recent video I'll link it up again pointing with my pinky I'll link it up here um, it was a, a music tag where I talked about 20 songs from my current playlist and crocheted part of the edge of my hexagon cardigan. That has been kind of my go-to project lately, so I have done a lot of work on that. But when it's done, I will, of course, show you guys. And this particular colorway, the Halloween Party, it also, like, they work up better than they feel in the skein it feels very very stiff in the skein and I was a little not disappointed but just kind of like oh this doesn't really feel like garment worthy yarn but it absolutely is once you work it up it softens up and I imagine once I wash it it'll also soften up quite a bit, which is, you know, par for the course with sort of value acrylics. They always sort of soften up more as you wear it and as you wash it and so on, but they definitely feel better in the project than it does in the skein. And you also really can't feel the sparkly strand in it at least I can't my hook does snag it from time to time but it hasn't really been like an issue I certainly haven't had a terrible time with it I've even crocheted here on camera with it so it's it, you know it happens infrequently enough that it doesn't it doesn't bother me and However, <laughs> what does bother me is that I've got two stitches left and it's turning green. I was really hoping I had enough left to do this full last attaching round with all orange, but you know, it is what it is. It's fine. So now that it's attached, I'm going to chain one gonna cut the yarn pull my hook out pull that chain one nice and tight and then finagle these stitches up here could even turn it to the other side and Voila, we are attached. Now I very much am probably going to spend some time here figuring out the best way for these to look so they're even. But the, the big portion of this project is done. I think I might do some fringe down here. There are, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 gaps. So 12 little bits of fringe down here. I guess the color change in the yarn will work. I don't know. I don't know what colors I want to do. Maybe I'll just do however they kind of pull out of the skein if I get to the green or get to the purple with the green. I might mix them together. I don't know. We'll see. But for now, this is this is on here. And if I sort of scrunch 
scrunch it all in together or even on this side although this side has the sort of funky chain one edge but even so you know it's fine it's on there and it looks pretty good and I think that'll look awesome hung up on my wall with maple Chucky's head off here with my stitch markers kind of freely dangling here you get one in there like that right omg this is such a good idea at least in my opinion it's a good idea and it also very much is giving me all the ideas for getting more fancy schmancy st uh, stitch markers from rose and from you know wherever else if you have suggestions where you you find fancy stitch markers like these leave me a comment let me know but yeah i want to just cover this whole thing with like spooky fun halloween themed stitch markers and this i mean i have so many of these dowel rods left i could make a whole series of these i could do themed ones i could put all skulls on one and then all pumpkins or all witchy ones on another one right like this is i am really excited about it i also thought like i could paint these i could cover these in contact paper like the customization options here are pretty much endless I could even crochet probably something to go over the ends here. Like, it's it's such a good idea. I'm so excited about this. But at least it's attached. It's attached, and the crochet piece, this piece, is done. And so, yeah, let's, let's move on to the next step. as you have followed along here I added the fringe and I have some thoughts so as you can probably tell from 
me working on it, from the little scraps here that I've got in my hand, from the yarn tails that have been here. This yarn, I would say, is not recommended for fringe. You can probably tell that the sparkle just kind of comes unraveled when you cut it, which makes sense. But then that sort of makes the fringe down here, it just sort of looks messy, right? Like it sort of looks a little crazy. It is not the most perfect fringe either. I'm not, this is only like the third time that I have ever made or done fringe on a project. So it's not going to be perfect anyway, but it, it just kind of looks messy and it's shedding pretty bad. So I would say don't recommend <laughs> making fringe with this yarn. I very easily could have done fringe with just orange, white, and purple and green from my stash and you know. It would have been just as good, but that's okay. We learn. It's what these projects, these videos are for. Learning, right? The other thing that I did was I chained kind of an arbitrary amount of two strands. It just so happened to work out that they were both green. And I'm not mad at the fact that they're both green because this end here up here started to be green. And so my thinking is perhaps the green hanger will maybe help distract will maybe help disguise the fact that this is green right here <laughs> maybe we'll see but it's just looped around there I don't know can you tell I could have slip stitched these here I didn't I think I'm just gonna tie both of these together like tie this around this too just so they stay together but I haven't decided that yet However, the green hanger, it kind of does help here. It sort of blends it in on the edges and makes it look a bit better. But I think for the most part, I am finished here. I do have a couple tails to weave in. I, I could have very easily added this orange tail at the bottom into my fringe. I didn't really think of it, but that's okay. I will weave it in like normal. I've also got a lot of scraps here, which will go into my scrap bin for a future thing. I have plans for all my scraps, so these are going to go in there too. And I also, I used a 7mm, hopefully you can see that. This is another Omi hook, just like the 5mm that I was using for most of the, the project is also an Omi hook. It may have helped me to go up even bigger when making this double-stranded chain and especially when pulling the tassels, the fringe through. I think I would have had an easier time maybe with a 9 or even a 10 would have maybe made things a bit easier. But again, learning, right? We're learning. So I just happened to arbitrarily grab a seven and I know now for next time, maybe go a bit bigger, right? But I'm going to spend some time here weaving my tails, probably fiddling even more here with my very messy fringe. And when this is all done, I'm going to attach all of my, all three <laughs> of my stitch markers and then I'm gonna hang it up and I will show you guys what it looks like. Are you ready for the grand reveal? Let's do it.